Yeah, and and you know, um, it's an it's amazing, at least from the outside looking in, the culture of being able to be so predictable, so regular with the releases. Uh, it really differentiates uh, Canonical within the Linux community. And and you know, if I'm an enterprise CTO, CIO, business executive, you know, I'm trying to change my brick and mortar uh, operation to become you know software defined and and so, you know software being the new factory floor. You know, what are some of the takeaways uh, an executive in a company can take from how Canonical operates in such a, you know, so many spears flying at it from uh, all directions, user feedback and all that. Um, how, how do you come out with such a robust product so regularly, so frequently? I think one thing is we have an unusual ability to be radical, um, you know, um, in a complex field, people for good reasons with, with well-grounded opinions disagree about a bunch of stuff. And you can often end up in an institution with something that looks like the average that you would get in any institution where you had a bunch of small people disagreeing with each other, right? Which is what makes it really hard to be different. Um, uh, for various reasons, uh, perhaps again, partly because I've sort of felt I had the luxury of, of, of only doing it to do it if in an interesting way. We, we've had the luxury of saying, look, we're just going to be a bit radical about this. The grounding for that particular cadence of releases idea was simply recognizing that there was no one feature or piece that was so important. You know, we're, we're, we're offering people a, a snapshot of this enormous world of open source. It's very hard to know if a release of OpenStack or a release of Kubernetes or a release of Hadoop or a release of the X window system is something that we should fixate on and 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 uh, and delay the whole thing for that one thing, right? So taking the view that in fact, in fact what we were doing was representing the state of the art of open source made it a lot easier to then say, well, look, let's set a date, and if there's a piece of open source which is of high quality it goes in and if it's not yet of high quality, it waits to the next round, right? So recognizing what we were really doing wasn't, you know, some complicated software from Canonical that had specific features which we were going to sell, but rather essentially an integration exercise to snapshot the world. We could essentially take a quality-based approach and that would give us the freedom to essentially take a time-based approach, right? Time and quality in this sense go together because we're saying if it's not good quality, it isn't in, so we can ship it, right? Um, uh, so that sort of sequence of thinking got us to, you know, interim releases every six months, LTS releases every two years. And that's kind of wonderful for commercial enterprise planners, right? Especially the more technically ad 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 adroit strategists because they can they can line up lots of different things in a very predictable way that they're not going to worry about and they know that we'll get it done right um uh, yeah what we've yeah. now added to that is 10 years of security maintenance right so if you're an if you're an enterprise you can say in one year's time i'm going to ship my software on a version of ubuntu that isn't yet released but i'm absolutely certain it'll be released and i know i'll have 10 years of support for that version of Ubuntu, right? And, and everything transverse that, that lives on that version, right? So it's a, it, it really energizes the very bright, very, very forward-looking uh, technology drivers. And I think that's why the biggest users of Ubuntu early on were the disruptors, right? The, the Netflixes and the Ubers um, of the world. Yeah, I, I just I'm waiting for a, a, a case study, a business school case study uh, to come out of, of this. Uh, it, it needs to be there. 